I recently shared some of the common hormone patterns really associated with weight gain in women and many of them causing a lot of grief, a lot of unnecessary grief and making us feel bad or guilty or not good or so many of the other things that we drive ourselves insane with. But what I want to do now is take those same hormone patterns, but talk about what you can do and really help understand that there are ways to control your hormones, to balance hormones naturally. And it often begins with food. Now I've posted a lot of great videos on estrogen dominance and insulin resistance. Please check those out right here, but let's connect the dots a little bit. This is one of my favorite things to do, by the way. So some of the patterns we talked about, for example, we talked about insulin resistance, right? What can you do about insulin resistance, which is all about having that high blood sugar, having a lot of belly fat in response to it. Well, my first answer is as your hormones are shifting and your blood sugar is getting out of control, balance insulin resistance with protein. We know that protein really makes a difference for hormones. In fact, in studies, when they look at perimenopausal and menopausal women, they find that an increase in protein does a couple of things. It helps to build muscle mass. It lowers blood sugar. It prevents useless snacking. And more importantly, it keeps your insulin levels nice and stable. What does that mean for you? Less belly fat. Some of my favorite sources of protein are right here. We have salmon, high in omega-3 fats, high in protein. This particular serving of salmon that you see right here, probably about five to six ounces, 30 grams of protein right off the bat. Two eggs give you about 14 grams. You can also use lentils that have not only the protein, but the fiber needed for hormone balancing. You get about 15 grams and about a half a cup to a cup of cooked lentils. So these are ways to get your protein in. Remember my usual protein recommendation is about 30 grams of protein every four hours to really help you get close to 70, 80, sometimes even up to 90 grams of protein a day for optimal blood sugar maintenance and for getting rid of belly fat. Let's do another one, estrogen dominance, right? So symptoms, remember, of estrogen dominance are gonna be those painful breasts, getting migraines, gaining weight, you know, feeling off, getting depressed. There's so many different symptoms, but you can manage estrogen dominance with some of the same foods. Here I've got broccoli, dandelion greens, and romaine lettuce, all of these high in fiber, more importantly, high in antioxidants. And then remember with broccoli as a cruciferous vegetables, it has a lot of meta I3C or indole 3 carbonyl that actually helps us to break estrogen down. Dandelion greens, again, the fiber, but also a liver purifier, helping with insulin resistance, helping with estrogen dominance, helping to bring those blood sugar numbers where they need to be and helping to clean out the excess androgens and estrogen from your system. So you can mix it up. It doesn't have to be broccoli. There's also kale and cauliflower and Brussels sprouts. There are many different types of greens, including Swiss chard, many types of liver purifiers, but this combo of protein, healthy fats, fiber, and your greens is sort of a magic bullet when it comes to managing many of the hormone patterns that we just talked about. All right, another great source of protein that I didn't mention, by the way, Greek yogurt. We've got about 15 to 20 grams of protein in Greek yogurt. So another way for you to get that 30 grams of protein every four hours, also a great source of calcium. So I love Greek yogurt. It's easy on the gut rich in probiotics as well. Again, one of the things we've seen with these hormone patterns is you need good gut health and getting in the probiotics to help balance out all those gut bacteria becomes very important too. All right, so this is the food part of the conversation when it comes to natural hormone balancing. But yes, of course, there's more. We need to talk about your toxic load because remember the East-West approach to hormone balancing is very much about getting a healthy gut, getting the nutrients, getting the liver where it needs to be. But what in the world is bogging down our liver? Here's what we know. The load of environmental toxins, whether it's from cleaning products, whether it's from the skincare you're using, the air we're breathing, the water we're drinking, is impacting your hormones. Many of these things are high, for example, in endocrine disruptors, things like parabens, phthalates, organophosphates, and now the science is there to show how it directly impacts hormone balance. This is the why behind why androgens are going up, why PCOS is going up, why estrogen dominance is going up, why so many women, especially black women, get fibroids. 
It's all connected here. So there are things again that you can do. Switch out your traditional cleaners for one that has really attempted to have a lower toxic load as paraben free, phthalate free, for example. Switch out your skincare and your makeup for one that is scent free and maybe lower in chemicals, especially again, your parabens and phthalates and many of these EDCs or endocrine disrupting chemicals. But at the end of the day, remember micro habits matter. The little things you do, adding in the greens, adding in the protein, eating consistently, getting that fiber in and switching out things in your home, things that you're putting on your skin, all of it makes a difference for natural hormone balancing. Once you put it all together, you'll see these hormone patterns start to stabilize and you can get better. And we haven't even talked about hormone replacement yet. For more great tips on how to balance your hormones using the East West approach and trying to stay holistic and natural, pre-order my book, The Hormone Shift, that is now available everywhere. It is a handbook for all of us. Give it to your daughter, your friends. We want all women to know that they can take control of their hormones even before we talk about hormone replacement therapy.